Hey guys, what is going on? This is Blue, and after a few weeks, we are now back with episode 4 of the Solo Q series. Uh, this video is going to be interesting for a few reasons, I think. Uh, the first of which is, because I'm just going to say it right out of the gate, in this video, I play like absolute crap. It's not a video of me playing, in all honesty, I'm not even really playing a good build. I'm playing a Trap Ranger at the moment. Uh, I'll link it down below. This was very much an experimental build. I don't really think I'm actually going to be using it again, but if you want to give it a shot, it'll be linked down below. But the reason I chose this video is for two reasons. A, uh, um, because of just in general what I end up doing throughout the course of this game and B because of my own team's composition here. Now if you take a look at it or if you can already see it here you can see that we have three thieves a Guardian, uh, of which I believe was a DPS Guardian and then you have myself playing this Trap Ranger build. Now what that instantly means is that our team is not really going to be able to commit to any big team fights because we don't really have anyone that can tank. With the Guardian playing DPS, there's not really going to be much he can do. So a lot of us winning this game is going to be dependent on our individual rotations and how we kind of work together as a squad to make sure people are in the correct place at the right time. And there's a lot that each of the individual players in this game were able to do to allow us, and again, spoiler alert, that would allow us to, in the end of this game, outcome to a victory. But it'll still be a very close game because of the team comp. So basically the point that I'm trying to get across with this video is to say, hey, just because because you get into a game with a bad team comp doesn't mean you're inst instantly going to lose. If you know what you're doing and if you don't panic and if you can rotate properly and work with your teammates to the best that you can, then you can definitely still win a game. So anyway, right off the bat there, we saw the majority of our bigger DPS guys heading over towards far, which was a bit of an interesting move, but it actually ends up working out pretty well because I'll get the free cap at home and then I'll be able to come over here and go up against this warrior. And again, I'll actually end up getting the decap on him too. Now, initially there, I'm, I am very much so trying to keep my distance from this guy because he is Condi and that Condi is going to be very annoying for me to deal with, so I'm just trying to keep away from him. And you can see this too with this other, I believe it was an engineer in this fight, that I'm just trying to kite around here, trying to get the damage on the warrior so that Ozzy, the other guardian, the DPS guardian here, can come in and make sure he gets his big DPS off. And so far that's going very well. And now it gets dropped down to a 2v1, and we're fighting very well over here too. And in the meantime of all of this, while I've been fighting, granted our home point did get decapped by this engineer who joined the fight about a minute ago. One of the thieves that ended up dying in our push over towards far point ends up coming out of spawn, and he'll get that back. So, so far, we're doing actually very, very well here. Now again, now that I had gotten low, and now that uh, there was the possibility of more enemies coming into the fight over here at mid, I fall back over towards the top. And you're going to see me doing this a lot in this game. That's just something that with this build I generally tend to do because of the fact that I am not the tankiest individual in the world. I can't really sit on points forever and just take deeps, and I don't really have a lot of active ways to heal myself. Uh, so with that said, I have to be a little bit more careful with my health pool. If I start getting low, it's usually a better choice for me to back out, just rotate around, hopefully pull the attention away from myself, and then rejoin the fight a few seconds later. Now, unfortunately here, the enemies do kind of swarm in, and easily they have a much, much better team fight composition, and it is at this point that I realize it, especially with the two other thieves from our team that had joined the fight here. So now I end up leaving this, going over towards the waterfall, in hopes that we can go and switch things over to a side cap strategy, which will end up working very well. I'll throw it on the traps over here just to make sure that if anybody else runs by, they'll get thrown into combat and slowed down. And again, as I'm getting over here, we'll be in a much better spot. The other thief's there for support too, but he'll just go back into mid. And this is where what I was talking about earlier really starts to come into play. Granted, the game gets a little bit boring here because a lot of it's just going to be me standing AFK over here towards the waterfall, but there's still a lot to talk about here. So at the moment, you can see, based mainly on the minimap here, you can see that our guys are spread pretty far around the map here, and it is kind of scrambling the blue team opponents. They've got a pretty good fight going in mid, and as well, this allowed me to get the free cap at Waterfall. Considering the enemy's positions on the mini-map here, and considering that we I wasn't too confident in the fact that we had actually killed anyone on the opponent team, I'm going to head back over here towards mid, but I'm not going to super duper commit to it or anything like that. I'm just kind of here to provide some support, and over the next few seconds, you'll see me, uh, once this ranger leaves, I believe, I'll, I'll try to get some DPS off onto this guardian, but then I'll end up kind of like falling back now that again, we've come into an outnumbered situation and it's a situation where they have the better fighting comp, so I really do not want to be here. It's much better for me to just fall back, try to take a 1v1, which is going to be one of my stronger suits in this build, uh, and hopefully somebody baits, takes the bait here and follows me back to Waterfall and end up fighting them there instead of going into a big mid-fight where there's a pretty high chance that I could get CC locked and focused down. So again, we're just seeing like what I was talking about earlier, uh, just going back and forth between mid and that point, keeping a close eye on that point. That's one of the important things there. Make sure you are keeping an eye on that point because somebody from the blue team could come out here at any second and go for a decap and get it with no issue whatsoever. So I got to be able to make sure that if someone does go there, I can fall back in time to make sure we don't lose the cap. But at the same time, you can see that our opponents still do control both of those points. So me coming in here and giving that additional support is not going to be the worst thing in the world because if it does end up pushing us towards a point where we can actually burst them down. And that's another thing too, is the fact we have three thieves. So if we get someone low enough and the thieves are close enough proximity to mid, they can come in and do the burst necessary to kill one of these guys. It's just that unfortunately at the moment here, I'm kind of thrown into a scenario where there's not much else I can do besides just going and poking with 
with a couple condies and traps and then falling back over towards the waterfall again when things start to look bad for me. And here's where I make a pretty big mistake to be completely honest. I had a burn tick on me. I had no way to cleanse it and as well with me being at such a low health pool, me kind of diving onto the point in mid was probably a not the best idea. Uh, this game actually happened a few days ago so I'm not entirely sure why I dived onto the point there. It might have just been to keep the point in its current cap that it was at. It might have just been stupidity but regardless I ended up doing it and again you can see that my mistake ended up costing me the waterfall point again because I decided to go aggressive which was pretty much a stupid move. I should have fallen back. I should have been over there towards the waterfall point and making sure that we were holding on to the points that we had control over the entire time. Now once again though our teammates are doing a very good job, and they have managed to get back control of the quarry. And now that we've got that quarry again, and that there's a big mid fight, which again, you can see by taking a quick, pretty quick look at the minimap, you can see that most of the opponents are pretty enthralled in that fight over there. I'm once again going to go for the side cap node and find it wide open, so I should have no trouble coming in here getting this decap while our teammates, granted, while our teammates are dying over towards middle, you can see them that they are very quickly starting to dissipate away from middle. Nonetheless, they have managed to distract, I believe, two, maybe even three uh, of the enemies over there, which has allowed me obviously to slip in here and get the decap, and two of those thieves managed to fall back to home too, so they're, and like this is a props to my teammates too, who have been doing so far with this comp, a phenomenal job at actually holding off the enemy, they've gone back there they've managed to hold off a bunch of other pushes that were coming in here too, and because of that, we're now going to be able to hold on to this two cap, which I think over the next few seconds should actually give us back the lead in this game, once again over here though, we can see that due to an enemy's slow rotation, uh, this NG walks directly into a huge barrage of my condies here, and because for whatever reason this Guardian decided to delay coming back over here to Waterfall. He's going to be unable to save him. Obviously, the additional support from my teammates was helping out there too, but that'll kind of be the end of that. And now again, Ranger comes in. I This is a little bit of a combat tip here too. For anybody that doesn't know, the terrain on Waterfall here, you can see that I was doing it as that uh, as that Ranger was coming in. You can actually abuse that pretty heavily um, and get a pretty big LOS advantage there just by kind of going slightly down the cliff and rotating around while still keeping full control of the capture point this entire time. So it's a nice little strategy you can do there uh, if you end up getting into a tough spot where you need to let some condies stick away on you if you need to avoid some range damage or something like that. It's a pretty good thing to uh, pretty good thing to keep in mind there if you're ever fighting on Waterfall Point on this map. But unfortunately here, I get into an outnumbered scenario and really kind of highlighting the, the badness of this build that I was running here. You can see uh, that I'm actually going to get thrown down pretty quickly now that this second Condi Engineer comes in and takes him out. But something to keep in mind once more as you take a look at the minimap itself you can see that quite a few of our opponents have gone down and I think a lot of that has to do with the actual the people that uh, ended up distracting over here at waterfall now again you have to remember that thieves don't have the highest health pools um, and at the same time here they're very very susceptible to condies if they're not paying attention so me having distracted both and this was kind of a luck of the draw thing this isn't really anything you're ever really going to be able to control uh, but just to touch on this for a second um, is that both the spirit ranger and the condi enemy which I believe was most if not all of the condi on the opponent team had gone over to fight me instead of being at mid which gave our thieves to be honest a pretty big hole to poke through back over there in mid and it allowed them to take control of that point with little to no issue while I was busy doing the 2v1 back over there at waterfall and even so we still hold control of our home point we still have I believe this is another one of the thieves holding off the NG over there by the blue team spawn and now that again because our and because our teammates are already fighting over there on waterfall there is no reason that I need to go over there they have that fight they've even got Ozzy over there who's technically speaking the second tankiest player on our team so we can just go over there and fight that on that point and I can head back over here to mid to make sure we hold on to control of the points we already have and that's what I've done here obviously I'm now back in mid I'm fighting this ranger and you can see me too here again I have to be very very careful on this point itself I'm not tanky by any stretch of the imagination so while I do kind of have to act as the tank due to the fact that there's not really any better options I still have to be very careful and I'm still going to be making pretty heavy use of the borders on this point due to its size uh, to hopefully keep myself up alive and away from this condi pressure that the, uh, that the ranger is going to throw on me as well as the warrior too because he's running condi warrior at the moment uh, to the best of my abilities but once again here just continuing on with the fight you can see that again our blue team opponents are kind of getting funneled into the mid fight here and i'm starting to see an outnumbered scenario now here again might have been a better idea for me to pull up but everyone was all in and we hadn't really gone i hadn't really even tried to help my team out with any big team fights so i kind of just decided to take the risk here and fight for it and there again with that ranger getting back up you can start to see one of the major flaws in this composition at the moment is the fact that we can't team fight due to the fact that we don't have a lot of corpse leave we do not have anyone that has very good stomp potentiality just due to the fact that if we tried to go in there if we tried to get that stomp off on the ranger there w any one of us would have easily gone to the downstate due to the enemy uh, support that was being given there at the time so me going in there so me being in this mid fight this in, in general our team kind of fighting here in mid was not going to be the best option due to the fact that we don't really have any ways to stomp execute or even res teammates if they go down there so i'll die again here but at this point 
as you can see here, the game's pretty much gone completely into our favor. We're at over 450 points. Our opponents are down by a little bit less than 150 here. So with that said, we've got pretty arguable control of this game. Again, coming out of the spawn, always making sure to check that mini map there. Back over towards the mid, you can see that most of blue is still over there, if not trying to take back our home node. And they've got no one controlling their waterfall, their home node here. So it's going to be another easy ticket for me to just come in here, score the decap, stop their point income, and allow us to keep ours rolling. And this was another, uh, this was probably one of the bigger mistakes that our opponents made to kind of talk about them for a second here, is the fact that they didn't really have anyone covering this home node throughout the entire game. They kind of just tried to go completely aggressive, all in on whatever fights they wanted to, and because nobody ever really tried to sit back and defend the home node, uh, I was able to come in here pretty much every single time I came over here, it was a free and open decap, and I just had to 1v1 someone or hold off a 1v2 in hopes that our opponents could get a better advantage than the other points. Our team, surprisingly, and again, you won't always have this happen in solo queue environments, but our team did a very good job of holding back those other nodes, making sure that we always had somebody keeping uh, keeping an eye on them, and making sure that just in general we didn't lose the caps there. And that, along with the movements that I was doing over here towards middle and the far node, kind of allowed us to win the game, even with this very unorthodox team comp. So as you can see here in about 10 ticks, we are going to win the game, and that's about it, guys. So I hope you have enjoyed this game, talking a little bit more about rotations as just in general your positioning. Uh, mainly in a Silica game, a lot of this won't really translate too well over to Team Q, unfortunately, due to the fact that, again, in a Team Q, you're going to have much better communication. You're going to have much better sense of awareness of your opponents there. So something like this probably would not work too well in that environment. But for something like this in Solo Q, there's always these little things you can do, not only on your own, but while working with what your teammates are already doing as well to make sure that even with a very unorthodox comp such as this, you can still win the game. So once again, guys, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Be sure to subscribe for more stuff like this as well as other SPVP stuff. And uh, yeah, leave a like if you liked it. Leave a dislike if you disliked it. And I will talk to you later, guys. Have an excellent day.